JFT just fair and direct. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week July the 20th until July the 24th. I am Haralambos Pissoros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But uh, before we start, let's read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, according to the economic calendar, this week appears uh, much lighter than the previous one, with no central bank meetings on the agenda. Uh, most important developments and events are Japan's uh, CPIs for June, Canada's retail sales for May and CPIs for June, uh, the debate in the US Congress with regards to a new coronavirus-related fiscal stimulus, and Last but not least, we have the preliminary PMIs from the Eurozone, the UK, and the US. So let's uh, start with uh, uh, today's uh, releases. Uh, the only releases worth mentioning, though they are still uh, not major market movers, are Germany's PPIs for June and Eurozone's current account balance for May. Germany's PPIs are already out, while uh, no forecast is currently available for Eurozone's current account uh, balance. Now on Tuesday, during the Asian morning, Japan's national CPIs for June are coming out. No forecast is available for the headliner rate, while the core one is anticipated to have ticked up to minus 0.1% year over year from um, minus 0.2%. Now, at its latest meeting, the Bank of Japan kept its monetary policy unchanged, with officials noting that they remain ready to take additional easing steps without hesitation if deemed necessary. However, they also added that the domestic economy is likely to start improving gradually in the second half of the year. So, subdued inflation is likely to keep the door for further easing wide open, but the fact uh, that officials expect the economy to improve in the second half makes us believe that they may wait for a while before deciding to add more stimulus. After all, it seems that there is not much space to do so, and they have to be extra careful uh, choosing the timing of when they should push the easing, the easing button. For now, we stick to our guns that the yen is likely to stay mostly linked to developments uh, concerning the broader investor morale. Now, the minutes from the latest RBA meeting uh, are also due to be released. At that gathering, the RBA kept its policy unchanged, with the statement language being more or less a reiteration of the previous one. Thus, we don't expect the minutes to result in any fireworks. We believe that they will highlight officials' uh, readiness to scale up uh, bond purchases if, uh, if uh, needed, and that the outlook remains uncertain, with the recovery expected to be a to be bumpy and dependent upon containment of the coronavirus. Now, with officials not appearing worried over the strengthening of the Aussie, we expect the risk linked currency to continue being driven by headlines and developments surrounding the overall market sentiment. Later in the day, Canada's uh, retail sales for May are coming out. Both the headline and core sales are forecast to have rebounded 20% month over month and 12.5% month over month after sliding 20%. 26.4 and 22% uh, percent, uh, respectively. At the last week's uh, gathering, the Bank of Canada kept its policy unchanged, and although officials noted that interest rates will stay untouched until uh, the 2% inflation target is sustainably achieved, they added that they stand ready to adjust uh, their programs, meaning their QE programs, if uh, market conditions uh, change. In our view, a rebound, in, a rebound in retail sales combined with the potential rebound in the CPI rates on Wednesday may allow Bank of Canada policymakers to stay sidelined for another gathering. Now on Wednesday, as I already noted, uh, we get Canada's CPIs for June and this is the only release worth mentioning. 
the headline rate is forecast to have returned uh, to the positive territory, uh, specifically to plus 0.2 percent year over year from uh, minus uh, 0.4 percent, while no forecast is uh, available for the core rate. As uh, we already know, that a small improvement uh, after a decent rebound in retail sales may allow the Bank of Canada to the Bank of Canada to sit comfortably on the sideline, at least at another uh, gathering, the upcoming one. Now on Thursday, as every Thursday, we get the U.S. Uh, initial jobless claims uh, for last week. The forecast uh, suggests that uh, another 1.3 million people signed for unemployment benefits, the same number as the week before. Now, with the slowdown in claims showing signs of a halt, this may raise concerns over the pace of the economic recovery in the U.S. That said, this week, the main focus in the U.S. may be the debate in the Congress over a new coronavirus aid bill, something that could uh, prove an important driver of uh, market sentiment amid, amid fears over another economic downturn due to, due to the virus keep uh, spreading fast. So if uh, they agree on a decent economic uh, stimulus package, um, uh, this could prove uh, positive for market sentiment, meaning equities could, uh, could gain. And paradoxically, the US dollar, because it's acting as a safe haven, may come under selling, a, selling interest. The opposite may be true if the economic package is not uh, supportive enough. Now, Friday is a PMI day. During the European morning, we get the preliminary prints for July from several uh, Eurozone members as well as from the bloc uh, as a whole. The Euro Area Manufacturing Index is anticipated to have risen to the equilibrium uh, level of 50 from 47.4 while the services one is expected to reveal expansion for the first time since February. Specifically, it is expected to have increased to 51 from 48.3. The composite index is forecast to have inched up to 51.1 from 48.5. Now, at last week's gathering, the ECB did not alter its monetary policy, but stayed ready to adjust all, uh, all its instruments as, as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves towards its aim in a sustained manner. At the press conference following the decision, President Lagarde urged EU governments to take action in battling the coronavirus pandemic as soon as possible. However, EU leaders are yet to find common ground at the special summit which started on Friday, although latest headlines suggest that there is uh, progress. Thus, if there is no solution until Friday, we doubt that the return of the PMI is back within expansionary territory will prove supportive enough for the euro, as its traders may start worrying that the economic recovery could stall again without any additional support. The opposite may be true if EU leaders eventually reach consensus in, the, in maybe today or the next couple of days. Now, the UK PMI is for July and the nation's retail sales for June are also coming out. No forecast is currently available for the PMIs, while both headline and core sales are expected to, to, to have improved at a slower pace than May's record prints. However, both uh, rates are still anticipated to be at very strong levels, 8.5% month over month and 7.9% month over month, respectively. Now, following the better than expected CPIs for June and the better than expected employment data for May, all due out last week, a decent set of uh, PMIs combined with another stellar improvement in retail sales may diminish expectations with regards to the adoption of negative interest rates by the Bank of England. Remember that we, um, ahead of the, the prior Bank of England meeting, we had uh, discussion and market chatter uh, that the bank may soon uh, opt for negative interest rates. We get uh, the market preliminary PMIs for July from uh, the US as well. The manufacturing index is expected to have risen to 51.5 from 49.8, while the services uh, one is anticipated to have increased to 51 from 47.9. New home sales for June are also due to be released with the forecast suggesting a slowdown to 3.6% month over month from 16.6%. Uh, so that's it uh, with regards to this week's events. Uh, at this point, uh, we'll leave you a few seconds if you have any questions uh, with regards to these events or any other market-related questions. And yeah, please feel free to, uh, 
to ask me and if I can answer, I will do so. So no questions. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. Uh, for those who, uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great weekend. I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next uh, Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT time. Uh, so goodbye, have a nice day and a better week. JFT, just fair and direct.